Close friends confirmed that he would wear a different outfit for every drill. He would go as far as disguising himself as a nurse, wearing a wig, and disguising himself as a whole. I was wearing a wig. A wig. Your boy GCK, we bout with another banger, man. man. We in the trenches with it, man. So y'all boy, like, comment, subscribe, get me up though. I'm trying to make it out. You feel me? But look though, man, if we get to the little beat, most rather shoot in Chicago, man. RP Lil B, he the reason that I told the XD. With that XD rock, got like Lil B. Cause Lil B was doing the shit that folks don't rap about. Folks don't was able to rap about certain shit because you get niggas like Lil B and other names that they, they, they don't want their names all over the internet type shit. But you got them, Lil B and his crowd and the crowd of motherfuckers who he's surround himself around. I'm um, broke. And that's what they live for. So if folks don't doing that shit, folks don't can rap about that shit. In these inner city gang conflicts, there's some people that are just built for war. The subject of today's video is a perfect example. The subject of today's video is known as a bloodthirsty savage that would do anything to catch his ops. He's listed as the primary suspect in over 30 different police documents. His own close friends confirmed that he would wear a different outfit for every drill. He would go as far as disguising himself as a nurse, wearing a wig, and disguising himself as a ho- I was wearing a wig. A wig. Like, I wouldn't even think my heart, so you, you feel me? I'd be thinking that's an old lady, trying to go help the old lady out. Eh? Turn around, that's your ops. You getting, you feel me? You getting blowed down on, bro. That shit crazy, a wig. Disguise himself, bro. Just to catch his ops off guard. He would even hide in trash cans, waiting for his ops to walk by. A trash can. Of I want video was so ruthless that one time when he got shot in the nah, gotta start he instantly the hopped in the car and shot shit. up his enemy's territory before going to the hospital to treat his injuries. The subject of today's video is not other than Little B, and today we're going to be telling his story. But before we get into the video, please be sure to like and subscribe. Little B, real name Raysan Shaw, was born on January 7th, 1994. He was from the south side of Chicago. He was originally a member of a set called TYMB. TYMB primarily consists of black disciples, but they also have some gangster disciples and stones as well. Little B was one of TYMB's most active members and would go on hits with them. Eventually, he would switch sides and become a member of a rival set called EBT. It's rumored that he switched to EBT because members of TYMB falsely accused him of snitching. One day, while playing around with the guns, Little B accidentally shot himself. This led to him being questioned by police, and that's where the snitching rumors started. These rumors caused animosity between Man, Little B and TYMB, so, uh, and he also had family members living in EBT so territory, so it was natural for him to join them. EBT is closely allied with STL, Jaro City, Taekwon World, and Some of EBT's main enemies were 600, 300, O Block, Zone 7, and TYMB. Little B was already active in the streets, but once he joined EBT, he would take things to a whole other level. On September 26, 2011, Little B and a member of Jaro City by the name of Tutu were walking together when they spotted a rival gang member. The person that they spotted was a Squirt Town member named Jizzle, real name Carl Spencer. Squirt Town is closely affiliated with 600. Once Little B and Tutu... One thing about Chicago, they got some crazy ass names up there. Squirt Town, what the fuck? That shit sound weird though, but 
RIP them boys. They pulled out their guns and chased him down. Once they caught up with him, they both shot him multiple times. Jizzle was shot in the head, abdomen, shoulder, and torso. He was taken to Stroger Hospital, where he was tragically pronounced dead. Years later, police documents would be released confirming that Little B and Tutu were the ones responsible for Jizzle's death. In fact, Jizzle's mother confirmed to police that she was told that Little B and Tutu killed her son shortly after it happened. Little B was never charged or arrested for this murder, and he would continue to do dirt in the streets. On October 18th, 2011, Multiple O Block members were hanging out on their block when two men wearing dark colored clothing approached them. The two men opened fire on an O Block member by the name of Patoon, real name Edward Riley. Patoon was shot multiple times in the head, wrist, and chest. After shooting Patoon, the men turned their attention to another O Block member named Oogie, who was only 15 years old at the time. Oogie was shot in the jaw, ear, and hand, but he luckily survived his injuries. Patoon was taken to Stroger Hospital, where he was tragically pronounced dead at just 20 years old. Years later, police documents would be released that identified Little B as one of the two shooters in the well, city. get to see 25. Little B was yeah. never arrested or charged for this murder. While doing all of this dirt in the streets, Little B would suffer a loss of his own. On November 11, 2011, a Jarl City member by the name of Tutu, real name Carlton Archer, was walking in an alley near the block of 6200 South Eberhard Avenue when a gunman pulled up on him and opened fire. Tutu was shot in the head and torso. His body would be found hours later by a man walking his dog. Tutu was only 17 years old at the time of his death. It is widely believed that Tutu was killed by a famous member of 600 by the name of Side. Side bragged about killing Tutu countless times in his music and on social media, but as usual in Chicago, despite the blatant self-snitching, he was never charged for it. Little B and Tutu had gone on drills together in the past, so losing him would just make Little B even worse. Eventually, Little B would suffer another loss. On October 30th, 2012, a Jarl City member known as P5, also known as Crack, real name Derek Johnson, was in the 6200 block of South Eberhard Avenue planning to meet with somebody when he was ambushed. He was attacked by multiple shooters and was shot at least 15 times. It's even believed that he was shot up to six times in the face. It is widely believed that King Vaughn and another O Block member by the name of J Money were two of the shooters in this incident. In fact, various O Block and 600 members would diss P5 on social media and mock him for getting shot in the face. A little under a year later, Little B would seemingly get his revenge by taking out one of the people responsible for P5's death just days before P5's birthday. On September 2nd, 2013, Little B was in a car lurking when he spotted J Money in another car. He had the driver follow J Money's car and they followed him to the 6600 block of South Rhodes Avenue. Once there, J Money started carrying laundry into his car when Little B hopped out of nowhere and opened fire. J Money tried to run away but fell to the ground as he was shot multiple times. J Money was tragically pronounced dead at the scene at just 21 years old. Years later, police documents would be released that confirmed Little B as the shooter in this incident. Bruh, you know you want all this beef and you so called catch the body? Bruh, don't be out here, you feel me, flagging like this, bruh. Like, you probably be on point, bruh. Like, I'd be put up in the house, you feel me? If I'm so called and I'm caught this body and I'm bragging about it, you feel me? I'd have been in the house, bruh. Like, I ain't for the go outside, I ain't for the catch me slip. Like, I ain't, I ain't on that time at all. I ain't playing on my life like that, you feel me, but. Can't speak on other folks' situations, but I'm just saying, bro. You got, you feel me? You got all this beef, and you so called on call the body, bro. You don't blame them boys for the reality. You feel me? Come, come get y'all. Probably ain't even said right, but come, come get you. You feel me? Like them folks coming, bro. Like you know that shit, bro. So stay on y'all peas, man. While y'all out here doing dirt, man. That's all I gotta say.
Aside from all of the murders he committed, Little B was terrorizing people throughout Chicago, including his own people. A notorious Chicago figure by the name of Trenches News told a story about how Little B once shot one of his fellow STL slash EBT members by the name of King Cole in the leg. Um, we all outside. He, Little B just walk up out of nowhere. He walk up out of nowhere and asks, um, he asks FBG Young, brother, like, hey man, I hear you, I hear you talk to my girl. So everybody looking up now. People shooting dice, they looking up because they know this little motherfucker. He he wow. Man, I'm talking about he say, no, nah, man, you better go and holler at Cole. So he sent them off to another person. Man, look, be walked right around the corner. Hey, Cole. Hey man, you been hollering at my girl. Cole looked up, man. You better get your goof ass on. Talking about a girl. That motherfucker. Pa! Popped in front of everybody, everybody scattered like roaches, man. I'm talking about the whole, everybody scattered. <laughs> he walked past two detective cars, bro. It is also rumored that Little B allegedly shot the notorious Chirac killer D Rose in the chest, and he allegedly shot at C Day as well. In another incident, an O Block member named Ocho Mana told a story in an interview about how Little B almost killed him. Had a, a run in with somebody named Little B or something, and some crazy yeah, shit happened. Some shit, happened. Some shit happened. went down, man. It was like a shootout, like what? Man, what was it? it was on 63rd. It was me. One of my homies, that, one of my old homies who was snitching on one of my homies and shit. And we on 63rd. You know, we used to try to steal iPhones. We used to be fucked up. We trying to get our high. We <laughs> out there pulling a 24. We out there like 7 in the morning. A motherfucker come with a fat. I mean, he had a dog. A motherfucker had a dog. A member of TYMB named Fei Fei admitted in an interview that Lil B even attempted to kill members of his old crew when he shot at multiple TYMB members. Afterwards, he called them on the phone and bragged about it. Lil B was the biggest target for his ops, but it would ultimately be the police that took him out. On March 29, 2014, shortly before 9 in the morning, police say they observed Little B conducting a hand-to-hand -hand drug exchange on the 6200 block of South Eberhardt. The police attempted to arrest Little B, but he made a run for it. They chased him through gangways all the way to 67th and Rhodes, and that is when they say he pulled a gun on them. The police then opened fire on Little B, striking him numerous times. Little B was pronounced dead on the scene at just 20 years old. Police say a Glock semi-automatic handgun with a laser sight and extended high-capacity magazine was recovered, but family and friends who witnessed the shooting insist that that's not true. The incident drew a large crowd of people into the streets, a lot of them angry at what they viewed as an unprovoked shooting. Many of them openly confronted the police. At least three people were led away in handcuffs. Many dispute the police story because Little B was shot seven times in the back and didn't fire a single shot at the police officers. Ultimately, none of the officers that shot Little B faced any punishment. Man, Chicago is a crazy place. There's so many people walking around there that have done things you can't even imagine, and it seems that the police barely even try to solve these crimes. Let this be a lesson or stay out of the streets. Stay out of the streets, man. Yeah, that's it. Please be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. Hey, that shit crazy, though, man. R.P. Libido, man. Y'all boys, make an example of this shit, bro. Don't be like this, bro. You feel me? Stay you. You feel me? But you can't, you can't. And the same now on the net, folks, you feel me? Problems, what they was going through in life, you feel me? Like, they probably go around that shit, you feel me? They had to adapt to that shit, you feel me? But y'all, boys, like, comment, subscribe, man. It's GCK on the net full time.
We back with another one. We dropping bangers back to back, man. I'm out of this bitch. See y'all, boys, man.